the country stone, the original stone that was here, um, started life as sedimentary mud and over millions of years it metamorphosed into a slate. The Cornish called it Killis. Um, it was formed in the Devonian period about 360 to 400 million years ago. The granite, which is an igneous rock, would be boiling up in the magma in a liquid state and about 280 million years ago it intruded basically around the cliffs of St Just and, and basically up through Cornwall. It can be seen on this plan as a dotted line which says granite to the landward side and Killis to the seaward side. Now, Killis started life as sedimentary mud, so basically it wasn't porous. So because of that, this mine, although it's 90% under the sea, was relatively dry because the water couldn't go through the non-porous Killis. We have a piece of rock that actually shows the join between the Killis and the granite. So you've got under the sea, this mine is in the black stuff, and landward, the mine is in granite. Granite, although it's very hard, is more porous than Killis. So this mine basically was relatively dry. Yeah, when you look down this shaft, you look down a tenth of the way to the bottom. You look down to a position somewhere around here, which is sea level. The attic level has to be above sea level because otherwise the sea will come in through the attic. So you're looking down, looking a tenth of the way, multiplied by 10 to get to the bottom. This shaft is 2,000 foot deep. Now, because of that, um, the mine has a tramming level, a level where the ore is sent um, up to the surface. So it shows on this plan that the tramming level in this mine was the 278 fathom level, which does join up back here. So what the miners would do is they would, if they were digging ore from above the tramming level, they would send it down to the tramming level. If they were digging it below, they would send it up to the tramming level. They would then load it on wagons. The miners would ride the wagons back to the shaft, load the skips and send that rock to surface. And that get, then gave them one hell of a job. A load of empty wagons here that have got to be physically pulled back up the slope to the loading base. So they, this mine used ponies. Seven ponies were used in all. Five were stabled at the 278 fathom level and two more were stabled at the 302 fathom level. And as far as we know, their job was to pull the empty wagons back up the slope to the loading base. Although to prove me wrong, there is a photograph here of a pony at the 278 level in this mine and it's got full loads. We don't know why, but it shows the working conditions of the pony. Right, this engine at Levant Mine was built by Harveys of Hale uh, in 1840. It's a winding engine. Its sole job is to take the rocks the miners had cut through underground and bring them to surface. So this piece of ore here illustrates how the tin ore is formed underground. You've basically got the granite horse rock, which is then split by veins. The outside of the vein, you can see a reddish coloured material, which is basically iron oxide or hematite, exactly the same as rust. We then run into quartz and tourmalines. And in this section here is where we have the tin. This black section with little sparkly bits in it, that is basically the tin ore. When we switch it on in a minute, it's going to make quite a racket. Uh, but the idea of stamps is to pulverise the chunks of tin ore in, to, to the consistency of a, of a finish sand in order to separate the individual particles of the heavier tin ore. Well, this is the Holman shaking table. And what will happen is the tin being crushed from the stamps will flow onto the table in the top and right hand side. The tin being heavy will get stuck behind the riffles and the shaking action will take the tin up the table. If I take a pound coin, I can put this onto the table to represent the tin. So we've got the shaken action, and if I put the coin there, you can see how, although the coin is heavy, it's actually going up the table. And if I'd had material on here now, you would see the lighter sands being washed down into the bottom and away. Just like in the processing, you swirl the particles around with water and you can already see a faint brown rim on there. That is the heavy tin mineral. The tin concentrate that we produce would basically be sold to a smelter. Now the smelter would either be in Cornwall or more likely in South Wales. Here we have an example of a tin ingot from Cornwall from the Carvedra smelter which was in Truro, basically underneath where the railway viaduct runs now. 
in this is a typical 28 pound tin ingot made in Cornwall and it has the stamp of the lamb and the flag. The lamb is in the Bible is the symbol of purity. The flag is obviously the Cornish flag and you then have the address. And this is how the tin would then be sold onto the manufacturers later on.